Hey everyone, I'm going to show you the fastest and easiest way to install WordPress on a Windows 10 box. We're going to be using XAMPP, which is a really cool little application that allows us to install Apache and MariaDB to Windows 10. And this will work the same way for Windows 11 or any of the Windows Server OSs. But yeah, let's go ahead and get right into the install process. All right, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is download WordPress. If you come to wordpress.org slash download, then you get greeted with this page that just says get WordPress. And then I'm going to click here where it says download and install. And that's going to take me down here to this download button. And once you click that, WordPress is only a 15 meg install. So that's going to be pretty cool. That'll download pretty quickly on my internet. And then we're going to pop over here to XAMPP, which as I said earlier, is a basically a package application that allows you to run Apache and MariaDB as well as PHP and Perl on a Windows box, which is super handy for hosting websites like this. So we're gonna go ahead and download the version for Windows. This is a little bit bigger. This is 160 meg install. So I'm just gonna wait on those to finish. The cool thing about XAMPP is it's really easy to start and stop your server. So if you make some changes, there's just a start and stop button. With the MariaDB install, you can use the PHP My Admin console. So it's just a web console that makes it really easy to make changes to the database. So it's super newbie friendly. And yeah, so I think it's a really great learning environment too, if this is your first website that you're trying to get set up. Um, I think these are great tools to learn with. So WordPress finished downloading. So I'm gonna go ahead and show that in folder. And I'm just gonna pull this file out of the WordPress folder real quick and put that in my downloads folder. And XAMPP also finished downloading, so I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that and run that exe. And I'm doing that while this is downloading, so my computer's thinking about opening XAMPP, but there we go, okay. And XAMPP's made by Bitnami. So this is just complaining about UAC. So it's saying hit WinR and then type in msconfig and bring up the tools, change UAC settings here, click launch, and then make sure this is dragged all the way down so that user account control doesn't block XAMPP from doing things. So we went ahead and did that. Next, we're gonna go through the install process. This is really just kind of accept all the modules, click next, figure out where you want it to install at. Um, I'm gonna put it at C slash XAMPP then just click next, next. Bitnami is kind of a secondary application that will allow you to one button install WordPress, Drupal, Joomla, etc. cetera. Um, we're not gonna do that because it's still a super easy process without having done that. Now I'm going through and it's actually installing XAMPP. This process can take a few minutes, so I'm just gonna kind of skip through to the end so you don't have to sit around and wait on that. All right, so once you've got XAMPP installed, it's time to go set up WordPress. When XAMPP installs, the last thing we do is tell it to bring up this console. And this is actually the XAMPP application itself. So the first thing we're gonna do is start Apache by clicking start, and that should turn green and then show ports 80 and 443, which are the default ports that Apache will be running on. And then also I'm gonna start MySQL. And MySQL defaults to port 3306. So if I were to go to say localhost at this point, then we get this, which is the welcome to XAMPP dashboard. All right, so now that we've got that, we can also click admin here on MySQL, and this will bring up the PHP My Admin console. Here, we wanna go ahead and create a new database for WordPress, and we're just gonna call that database WordPress and click create. So now we have a new database that WordPress is gonna install itself into. So the way WordPress works is there's actually a bunch of PHP files that run the website, but all of the articles and posts and users and stuff, that stuff is stored inside of a database. So when you're doing the install process, you need a database set up for WordPress to connect to so it can insert all that information when it's initially installed. So now that we've got our WordPress database set up, we can start the install process. So the next thing we need to do is we need to come over here and click Explorer so we can see the XAMPP install location. 
Then we're going to go to HT Docs, and this is where the website is actually stored at. I'm just going to go ahead and delete all of this, and then I'm going to go to my downloads folder and find the WordPress folder that I created by extracting the WordPress zip file that we just downloaded here. And now I'm just going to copy that WordPress folder over to the HT Docs folder. Actually, what I need to do is cut all of the files that were inside that WordPress folder and just put them right here on the bottom of the HT Docs folder. Okay, so now we've got it set up so that the HT Docs folder just has our WordPress files and you're looking for like WordPress-login, index.php, and all that stuff. So now if we go to localhost and say port 80, we get this page, which is actually the WordPress setup page, which is perfect. This is what we were trying to do. So we're gonna click continue, and then this is gonna basically explain how you need to go through and actually set up the database. We've already created our database, and then we're gonna use the default username and password. You should not do this for a production environment, obviously. So we're gonna come here, and we named our database WordPress with the lowercase w, which is actually exactly what they did by default. Um, I believe XAMPP sets the default username and password for the database to root and no password. And then the host here, this is going to be your domain name. And in this case, we're just using localhost because that's the default. We're going to use WP underscore. So it's going to create a bunch of tables in this database. And those tables are going to have the prefix WP underscore before them. So like WP underscore posts, for example. And you can change that if you'd like, but I've never changed it. I don't really see a good reason to do that. Um, all right, Sparky, you've made it through this part of the installation. WordCast cannot communicate with the database, which this is super good. Um, sometimes you have a struggle with that, especially when you're setting this up on a Linux box. So it looks like we're ready to run the install. Um, I'm just going to say test site for the site title here. Um, you want to give this a username so you can log in through the WordPress console. And test password... Let's see if it'll let me get away with um, using test password. And then I will throw my email in here. Uh, I'm gonna confirm the use of a weak password. Do not do this on an actual environment. I'm just doing this on a test environment that I'm installing for YouTube. So now I clicked install WordPress. Uh, WordPress has been installed, thank you. So now we get the login screen. If you just go to localhost, you actually get your website at this point. But if you're ever trying to log in to the back end of your WordPress website, it's gonna be whatever the URL is slash wp-login.php, dash login.php, sorry. And here we're just gonna put that same username that I just set and my test password that I just set as well. And now we're logged into the back end of WordPress and we're ready to edit our site. So at this point, I can change the site identity and I can just edit things. Basically, we're good to go as far as installing WordPress goes. From this point, I would probably recommend, say, the Yoast SEO plugin. That's a super good plugin to get started. There's so many other plugins. Um, definitely set up Google Analytics if you're actually hosting this out to the world. But yeah, that's about it to get WordPress running. This is definitely a super simple thing to do, but it's very useful. And I mean, if you're trying to get out there and just start working on your first website, this is such an easy setup. So right now, nobody else will be able to see my website unless they're on my local network. So what you would need to do is set up port forwarding on your router to forward to your local IP address. And then, so for example, if I did CMD, big my local IP address is 192.168.1.233. That's this machine's IP address that my router gave it. You would wanna forward port 80 to this IP address. And then if someone else connected to your external IP address, which is if you Google what is my IP, your external IP address is gonna be returned there. 
by Google. And that will be what you give to someone who's not behind your local network to connect to your website. After that point, you would want to set up a domain name and point a DNS server to your local host. Um, I could make a video on how to do that, but for now, I think we've almost ran over the scope of just installing and setting up WordPress on a Windows box. But that's really it. I think XAMPP is a really great tool because it makes this such an easy process to get to building a website straight out the door. So thanks for watching. I hope this helped you out. And if you wouldn't mind subscribing, that would really help the channel out. But yeah, that's it. And I'll see you in the next one.